What's the word, y'all? Did Lottie Walker just put the Golden State Warriors away? I'm gonna say no, not yet. Uh, I, I'm not gonna completely write off Steph Curry um, until it's actually, actually over. But being down 3-1, as we know through our history, for most of the most of the time, it's a death sentence. Now, we have seen Steph Curry, Draymond Green, and Klay Thompson come back from down 3-1 before, so I'm not writing them off completely, but, but, but it don't look good. <laughs> it don't look good. Also, the TikTok Corgi predicted that the Warriors are gonna go down 3-1 and he predicted that they were going to come back. So maybe that's still up for grabs. But Lonnie Walker over the last two games have been a revelation. So after the first two games, me and the guys were talking about Darvin Ham and his rotations and his approach to the playoff rotations. For the most part, through the first two games, he kept it very close to the chest. And the Lakers offense was very stagnant. There, were, there wasn't a lot of people out there that Steve Kerr and the Warriors trusted. They let LeBron shoot as many jump shots as he wanted. They let Rui Hachimura shoot as many jump shots, even though he's been hot this postseason. They didn't have a lot of people on the court that the Warriors respected. And I was asking for Darvin Ham to kind of divvy that up. It's to Allow Malik Beasley to play a little bit. He's one of the higher value three-point shooters, and hell, you traded for him for his three-point ability. But instead of it being Malik Beasley, it's, it's been Lonnie Walker. And it hasn't necessarily been a three-point shooting, but in general, it's been Lonnie Walker giving the boost offensively, something that Steve Kerr and company haven't really prepared for. And in this game, the fourth quarter wasn't about LeBron. It wasn't about Anthony Davis. They came into this game on this fourth quarter, I think, down by seven points. And instead of it being a dominant performance from one of the top 75 players of all time that on the Lakers, it was Lonnie Walker who was getting the isolation possessions, that was getting the bulk of the jump shots instead of Bron and AD. And he might have done it. Again, it's 3-1 and the series is not over, but 3-1 is... It's tough to come back from, especially when you consider that the Lakers have been very dominant at home this season, or I guess in the play postseason. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think they've lost a home game just yet. And again, the Warriors have struggled to perform at home. I know in the playoffs, it has been relatively decent. They went into uh, to Sacramento and went two on the road, but, but the Lakers are just playing a little bit better. And earlier in this game, I was given a lot of credit to Steve Kerr because I thought his coaching was great. I mean, he started um, Gary Payton the second, you know, to start the game off. And I was very intrigued by it. Like, okay, what did they see over the last couple minutes of the last game that made them think that Gary Payton was, was the choice? Because in my mind, off rip, I'm like, ah, because he's a non-shooter, I mean, they just going to allow him to pack the paint. Absolutely not. They brought Gary Payton into every single action, which means that Anthony Davis was brought into every single action. And early in this game, the Warriors were getting to the basket at will. Steph Curry was getting downhill. And if it wasn't him finishing at the rim, he was dishing it off to somebody else who might have dished it off to somebody else. And boom, they was getting bucket after bucket after bucket. And I don't know how many points in the paint they had in the first half, but I guarantee you it was way more in the first half than the second half. Because once the second half came around, we didn't see a lot of that. And I was so very excited to see what Darvin Ham was going to talk to his team about and see what type of different things he was going to do in order to counteract that. Because all first half, uh, it was Steph Curry putting Gary Payton in the action or somebody else putting Gary Payton in the action and making Anthony Davis come up to the point of attack. So now the pain is completely open because this over the last couple months, Anthony Davis has been the most dominant defensive player in ball. And a lot of that is in that paint. And then you saw in the first half. They, they got him away for that, and they was just getting bucket after bucket. And I'm like, Darvin, what are you going to do? What adjustments will you make? He didn't even need to make adjustments, y'all. At least he didn't have to make a lot of adjustments come fourth quarter because they went away from early and third quarter. They did do it a little bit. And, and Steph Curry was having a ridiculous third quarter. It wasn't even about him scoring the ball. He was dishing it off. He ended up with a triple-double, which is dope for Steph Curry. But I think he would trade that triple-double for, <laughs> for a win. But they did it a little bit in the third. But in the fourth quarter, it was pretty much gone until, like, one of the last possessions in the last three minutes. And you're like, what is happening? Your team came into this quarter with a seven-point lead. And the thing that was working over and over and over was gone. Even Stan, was it Stan or Jeff? One of the Van Gundys was talking about on the broadcast, like, where did it go? And then the few times they did use it in the fourth quarter, it ended in the basket. So I don't know how you go away from it completely. The Lakers also decided that, like, we allow Wiggins to shoot. The All-Star last season, we were just going to allow him to shoot. And he missed a ton of shots today that was completely wide open. And it was a good game plan. Because would you rather leave him or would you rather leave Clay? And Clay got a lot of shots up today. A lot of them didn't fall, but I would again take my chances with Wiggs versus Clay. Speaking of that, late in this game, uh, Clay took two heavily contested three-point shots. They're like, 
I, I can't get behind. I know he's Clay Thompson. And he's definitely made those shots before in his career. But given the atmosphere of the Lakers, and they were in the middle of a really good run for Clay Thompson to just come down court and the first shot attempt he saw taken and then brick it is rough. And I'm not even counting the one where you had to get it up with two seconds on the shot clock. That wasn't really relevant. But, like, there was one on the top left wing and then one in the corner where he just missed. And he got one very good look when Lonnie Walker, who had done, again, we talked about Lonnie Walker offensively because he was really solid. Lonnie Walker and his denial on Klay Thompson for the majority of the fourth quarter was elite as well. But there was one hiccup. I don't remember if it was on an offensive rebound or whatever where Lonnie Walker had to make a split decision. So do I guard Wiggins or do I guard Klay? And he made one step to towards Wiggs, and Clay ended up with the ball, and Clay made the shot. But for the most part after that, it was denial, deny, denial, and then heavily contested Clay, heavily contested Clay. But the stops, when Anthony Davis had to sit in that chip, one-on-one with Steph Curry for back-to-back -back possessions because they couldn't get that rebound, that's what, that is the moment you ask for for Anthony Davis. Where like all game long, I wouldn't say the word roasted, but they made him make decisions that he didn't want to make for the majority of the game. But in that moment of time, it was him versus Steph Curry, and he got the stops twice. And that's why I was just watching the, the post, because I'm recording this right after. Um, LeBron did his little interview, and he said that Anthony Davis is the best defensive player in ball, and that's this is one of the reasons why. I did also really love the embrace that Lottie Walker got after the game. There was like, this was the game of his career. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And now you're up uh, three games to one, and you got to go to chase. Something tells me, based on what the last series did with the, with the Lakers versus the Grizzlies, that the next game is going to be a very heavy coast game for LeBron. Uh, or maybe he don't take that approach because it's the Warriors and you respect them maybe a little bit more than you respect the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, but they're still world where Steph Curry and company get they 3-1 comeback revenge. You know what I'm saying? In this series, is after what happened. So, uh, again, it's not over with. But, but boy, is it, it's, it's, it's going to be rough to win not just game five, but also go back into, into Staples. Yeah, Staples. And then win that game, then go back. Like 3-1 comebacks. Again, we've seen them done before against OKC with this core. But the, the, the exterior parts aren't the same where you're asking for somebody to step up to help Steph Curry, who was having a mech. Again, he didn't shoot the ball well from three, but having another really good game, and you just look in and you're like, who's going to do it? Who's going to be the one to step up? It was Gary Payton again in that first half, but they went away from him. It's, it's going to be rough. A super fun game nonetheless. We got a really good game one. That was the Jordan Poole shot. And the game two and game three are blowouts both ways. And what I realized about myself and something I did not know, I'm so used in the last couple of years to kind of enjoying the playoffs by myself, you know, I'm usually here and oh man, that sounds terrible. But like I usually do it myself. That's why I'm like the most attentive. Saturday was my boy's Mike's birthday. He's a Lakers fan. We went over to his crib to watch the last game on Saturday. And I don't remember anything about it. And that don't mean that I wasn't drunk or not. You know what I'm saying? But like because I was socializing and stuff, I don't remember much about it. So I need for these games to be alone so I can dissect and get content for y'all. Anyway, that wasn't the only team to go up 3-1. Um, the Heat. The, the, the Heat did it again. I just cannot believe this team is one game away. And this video was definitely going to be more geared towards the Heat, depending on how this game ended. Because I know we've talked about this before. It's becoming more of a reality more and more every single season where, like, the regular season is basically just for the super diehard fans that just want something to do every single night, which is watch the game of ball. But it doesn't matter as much as we try to make it. We're like, right now, again, the, the Warriors are down. Uh, the Warriors were 60. And now the Western Conference is different this season than a lot of seasons. But the Warriors were 60. They beat the three. And now the Lakers, who are a playing team, a seventh seed, are one game away from being in the conference finals. Another playing team out east is one game away from being in the conference finals. And you're looking up like, okay, why why did the Bucks play so well in the regular season? Why did the Knicks go on that big run in the regular season just for them to be in a situation to be down 3-1? Uh, but the Miami Heat, Harden Hustle, has prevailed again. Um, like, Heat culture is something that's mean a lot, um, but when it's rocking, it's rocking, and right now it is. And last series, we saw Mitchell Robinson, Julius Randle, Ihar, all of these dudes dominate the Cavaliers on the glass. And that was one of the main reasons why they got done with that series so easily. I mean, and I'm not even mentioning uh, Josh Hart as well. They got done with that series so easily because they got so many extra possessions, and giving up offensive rebounds is demoralizing to the team that's doing it. And in this series, they have a few games where they won the rebound and battle. But in this game specifically, it, it was nasty, bro. It was nasty. Where, like, the effort was non-existent. 
And this is a series where I think that a, a lot of people did look at the Knicks at being the favorite, mostly because they showed that their depth was one thing that they can rely on in that first round and because the heart and hustle from the Knicks were a thing. And right now it's gone. And I just got the notification that Julius Randle was saying maybe they wanted more than us. Oh, man, that's, that's, that's a rough quote from your all-NBA, all-star caliber player going into a, a game where it's win or go home. Um, so I can't say exactly what the next game is going to look like, but the Heat have their number right now. And then we got the BAM offensive game. And if Bam is giving you 20, how much was it, 23 points, oh, it's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be rough because, again, Bam hasn't been able to do this much in this postseason run. But if he's giving you this and Jimmy's giving you his production and you also could get Kyle Lowry who's getting turned back the clocks and then get a random, um, you, you're going to get a Duncan Robinson shooting four for five from three game. He ain't shot it well. He's one for seven a night. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. So uh, the, tomorrow is a big day because we got the other two series are tied to two. And yeah, going up 3-2 is pretty solid. And we're going back to Denver, who's been amazing at home. And then we're going back to Boston. And we'll see exactly what happens, man. Leave a like, subscribe. Let me know what you think about these series so far. Um, yeah, whatever.